Hey, what's going on? My name is Brennan Myers and welcome to the Create You Experience. If you are new here, what we do is we create an experience for you before we jump into the podcast. And oh, by the way, we're on all audio platforms and also here on YouTube. It's unfiltered. We really dig deep and we create you. Now with this experience, we really dive into the guest and we give you an experience that you can take not only into your own life, but get motivated about and ignite into the podcast itself. Now before we jump into the guest today, go down to the description and when you review the podcast on iTunes, remember only on iTunes and through that link in the description, you receive seven of my best products, my ABBA program, my Shred Fast program, my business building PDFs, I got two of them for you and also meal plans and grocery lists and much more. So make sure you get to do that before we jump in. Now, today I want to welcome you to Dylan McKenna. This is a young man, but very successful, very powerful. He's strong in the gym and outside of the gym as an entrepreneur. He's also a Gymshark athlete. He's a YouTuber and he's growing like wildfire. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the gym right now and let's get started. Dylan, my man. What's up, brother? <laughs> so I actually want to show two different workouts. So today we have right. we have legs, and then we'll just do a little bit of that, but also the gym at Armbrust where we trained as well. Put me that through a ass. yeah yeah put me yeah. through a killer ass workout. I did so the other day, what happened the other day, dude? I, I tried to put him through a little workout the other day. He kind of wanders off, couldn't handle it. <laughs> on camera though, it's not it's, it's it's killer. It's killer. Yeah. So let's jump into this leg workout. Is there anything that you would give like as advice for any young lifter right now uh, to get really really strong in the yeah. gym? I would say, I mean, because when I first started in the gym, I had no idea what I was doing. I was overtraining. I would go to the gym six, seven days a week. I would bench twice a day because I thought that was what was going to get my bench huge. Um, and then I found that actually more is not always better. And what I found was actually getting on a correct program, getting on a, a proper regimen, something like, I mean, I know you have programs, I have programs, there's a bunch of programs out there, and getting on something that you're starting out with your bench squat or deadlift. Um, and just, yeah, having it in, in a regimented training uh, cycle and really like that's going to blow your strength up. And that's really when my strength started blowing up is when I stopped overtraining and I got on a proper program, like a legs push pull type split. Um, that's what I personally do. So like I said, start out with your bench squat or deadlift. Um, and then you go into your hypertrophy movements, aka your muscle building movements after that. So that's, that's main advice. <laughs> You just saw some of his training here in this gym doing legs. Now let's jump over to arm breast and let's dig right in. There you have it, legs currently right now. Then we hit the gym and hit arm brush, upper body. Now let's jump right in to the Create You experience. Hey, my name is Brennan Myers and welcome to the Create You experience where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right Cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you Welcome to the Create You Experience 
What a fucking beautiful day it is. Yeah? Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Fucking beautiful day. By the way, before we get into anything and introduce the guest, if you are here on YouTube, remember audio platform. Guys, girls, everyone, check out YouTube. We have an experience before the actual podcast begins. Today, we have Dylan McKenna joining us. Dylan, say what up. What's going on, guys? I'm excited to be here. Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Look, I love it here. You're cutting into my intro. I, I, need, I yeah. don't care, man. Okay. I talk too much. You know, that's how I am, man. It is, <laughs> Dylan, it is. Dylan's the man, as you can, as, as you can really hear. But if you're on audio, look, Dylan McKenna is uh, a business owner, the Gymshark athlete. Uh, he's building an incredible audience on YouTube and social media. Um, he does a lot, and he travels a lot, and I'm super excited to jump into a lot and, and really peel back all the layers because he's interesting. He's younger, but at the same time, you got that old soul mind. 21 in the flesh, 40 in the mind now. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyways, if you are new here, make sure you go into the show notes or the description and check out for absolutely free. You can get seven amazing products. My, my app, uh, my app program, um, some business building tips and, and PDFs and uh, meal plans and stuff for you. Absolutely free when you review the podcast. So go ahead and do that on iTunes in the show notes or in the description. Um, but yeah, welcome to the create you experience where we really dive in we dive deep and we just go off of the tip of our tongues we say what we feel and we do what we do does that make any sense it doesn't make that much sense cool no it's fun though. thanks brother yeah. appreciate that brother, brother. <laughs> so real quick dylan right. who the fuck are you bro who are we all man i don't, I don't really <laughs> know who i am honestly no but i would say a brief description i would say how i got into social media and how i got into lifting all that type of stuff so i started out as like a super skinny teenager i played sports my entire life um i was always super insecure that i was extremely skinny people would you know make comments this that and the other thing so fell in love with the gym freshman year of high school when i played football um in high school and uh, yeah i kind of quit all sports from there and i started lifting weights and i it became a huge passion for me it changed my life um when i started changing physically it really changed my mind my mindset and everything mentally and I started really enjoying helping my friends who were overweight, a little underweight, kind of, you know, feel more confident in themselves. And so then it kind of transitioned over into social media and some fucking how. I don't know how. I really don't know how. <laughs> he became the big cheese and all of a sudden all I, the cheese is melting. Yeah, everywhere. all the cheese is melting and I just, I, I gained some followers and people like to watch me. I have no idea why, honestly, but yeah. So, I mean, well, I have a little bit of an idea, but. <laughs> but um, so I would say that it's not his beard. Beautiful beard, by the way. Yeah, it's not the beard. Yeah, it's not the beard. It's actually how funny he is. But let's unravel that because you're not just funny just like all the time yeah. because you're just f a funny person all the time. Like you are, but yeah. there's a lot more to it. So let's actually get serious Interesting. because you went through some mm -hmm. serious shit in your life. Yeah. And you don't talk about it. For sure. Mm -hmm. So tell us what happened, man. Yeah. Well, I would say for like to answer that, honestly, I, I feel like I do joke a, a, a lot all the time and, I, and on social media I do as well. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a persona cause I really am like that in person a lot yeah, of the time, are. but, um, at the same time, yeah, like I feel like a lot of people on my social medias don't really know, um, the real true me. Like they take me as a joke a little bit or that, you know what I mean? Cause I really am always joking and stuff. I don't get too serious, but, um, yeah, man. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how to say, jump into that. So, so just jump into it. You've went through some serious yeah. hardships. Yeah. What's something that you can get really vulnerable that. Cause look, a lot of people that follow you are mm -hmm. watching and, and listening yeah. right now. So, so let's get yeah. vulnerable well, and, and open that door up for you and in, in the growth yeah. of your businesses and what you want to create. So, so, so what is that? So what I would say honestly is, well, the number one thing is I struggle with like anxiety pretty bad and especially growing up. So when I was 10 years old, my dad passed away and, um, I would say that's kind of when the anxiety for me started and getting really, really bad. And, um, I think that that's kind of what made me become the jokester that I am in a sense because yeah. I've gone through so many hardships I mean yeah like my dad passed away when I was 10 I have a little sister who's 10 years younger than me so just growing up with that um you know my mom's always been amazing and taking care of us but you know it is it's difficult uh losing your dad at that age for sure and so that caused a good amount of um of anxiety I think and and I still struggle with it to this day but I just try to make light of of life and just every situation in a sense right yeah so so, so, so what do you feel like hold you back today like what's something that be so being so serious like what yeah. if you were so serious in your life what do you is there anything that you're fearful of or you're or you're like uh, i don't really like that so i'm not yeah. gonna 
what makes you uncomfortable in that sense? I think really a lot of the times, I mean, a lot of things are going to make me uncomfortable. I think anything that does make me uncomfortable, I am prone to kind of steer clear of it, right? Whether that be a girl, whether it be like a relationship, whether yeah. it be a business opportunity, whether it be anything. Um, dude, when I was in high school, I couldn't even sleep over at my friend's house because I was like, I was too anxious. I was too scared to like leave my own bed, my own comfort zone. So I, what I would say and what I'm learning currently is that it's always good to make yourself uncomfortable. I would say that like the number one thing that holds me back is staying in my comfort zones. And that's with business. That's with friendships. Where you live. Where I live. Interesting. It's interesting that I bring that up. There's a lot more to that, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, for example, like I definitely have the opportunity to really move anywhere that I want to move. Um, but it is difficult for me to just take pick up from my hometown. Yeah where I'm from, where my family's from. And so like, as you can see, I still struggle with it for sure, but I am conscious of it. And I try to make myself uncomfortable as much as possible, even traveling and things of that nature, which I do frequently, like you said, yeah. makes me uncomfortable. And that's, so yeah, I mean, I think it's sometimes baby steps, but yeah, I would say. So, so, so that anxiety, I love how you touch on that and you're mm -hmm. actually open with it because yeah. you know, your dad passing, that's, that's something so, so fucking hard to, to yeah. deal with. And it's not even about just dealing with it. It's, it's a lifelong, like, it's not mm -hmm. a, like, has like a quote unquote struggle, but it's like a, something that you, you, you really have to work through your 100%. entire life. Yeah. And you know, you want to show up for your kids one day. Absolutely. You want, of course you want kids one day, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you want to be there for them. And so how do you show up? And I want to get, j jump back into mm -hmm. anxiety soon, yeah. but like, how do you show up for your audience in mm -hmm. that way? Like we're maybe people who are watching yeah. or listening that they don't know what that looks like. Like, where yeah. do you feel like you're showing up for them? Well, to be honest, I feel like I show up for my audience in the way that other people have shown up for me in a sense. And, and in that way is that like just providing an outlet for someone to come and get some entertainment from, I mean, I do provide a lot of, um, you know, educational stuff as well, but I think just giving people a break from their day to come to my channel yeah. and laugh and enjoy like me and my friends dynamics and feel like they're a part of that in a sense. Right. Um, and, and I remember watching like Christian Guzman's videos back in the day. I would watch Guma. His, Guma. Yeah. I would watch his videos and like, he was someone who definitely, when I was feeling like shit, feeling anxious, sitting in my fucking room, you know, not knowing what, what I wanted to do. I mean, I'd watch those videos and it would just give me some type of a uh, light or motivation and entertainment. It would take me away from that shitty, like anxious space that I was in. And so I like to think that that's what I provide for people the most, honestly, is just, is, is that really. So, 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 so what happens when you're anxious, like what are some symptoms that you experience? Ooh, I mean, honestly, the physical symptoms of it. And it's funny because even the other night, like the other night when I, before I went to bed, I kind of had like a little bit of anxiety. But um, basically, it'll physically you'll have like uh, sweaty hands, tingling. You know, the, the heartbeat will go up. Like yeah. you literally feel like you're actually dying sometimes. Like hard breathing. Like, Do you ever have a hard hard time breathing? Oh yeah, like and that's what it'll start. Like you'll have a hard time breathing because your heart rate's elevated. It's it's almost like your body's going to the mode that you're about to get attacked <laughs> yeah. by a fucking bear, but you're sitting on a fucking bed, <laughs> literally trying to go to sleep, and you're like, holy shit. Well, I don't think this is supposed to happen. So then yeah. then you start getting in your head, and that's really. And then your anxiety preys on it. And then, you know, you have a little fucking panic attack for 30 minutes. You <laughs> yeah, get over yeah, it. Yeah. You go to bed. But dude, so, so, so I actually want to touch on this because yeah. I think anxiety just really takes over a lot of us. Mm -hmm. um, I've had anxiety my entire life. I don't know if you know this, yeah. but I, I, I've kind of talked about it a little bit, but hard time breathing, like seeing stars, like my fingers, like, like sweaty yeah. palms. Yeah. But also like my hands, I couldn't so you're feel saying my like hands. Panic attacks in a sense. Uh, anxiety all the time where it's like, even me, like just the other night I had, uh, my friend Sarah here mm -hmm. and like we were watching my vlog back and I was breathe Like I was, yeah, like I was taking a big deep breath yep. consistently. Mm -hmm. And she's like, are you having trouble breathing? And I'm like, I'm like, N no, it's just, I, like, I'm, I'm actually a little anxious right now. Yeah. Why? And we started going into it. It's like, well, you know, I, I feel like you're watching my video and um, I want it to be perfect and all yeah. these different things. And like, I create it of myself, but mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's wrong. I don't feel like it's wrong that we have anxiety. Yeah. I think it's how we deal with it. Absolutely. Right. Because a lot of high performers actually have a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. and it's because they, they hold themselves to such a high standard, right? Mm -hmm. Do you hold yourself to a high standard? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And you're always wanting to do more and more and always more. Always like thinking, always having ideas, 100%. Yeah, like the mind never, and like it could be good and bad because like you said, a lot of successful people are people who are anxious people because they're always moving. You know what I mean? Like they could, they could go to bed at 
uh, three in the morning, wake up at six, and like their mind's immediately moving right when they're up, before right. they're in bed. They're they're always ready. They're thinking. They're thinking. They're thinking. And like that's kind of how I. Yeah, so, so like I actually think if you're listening or watching, mm -hmm. there's some remedies that you can actually take from this, and I think you could take some yeah. some remedies from this. Yeah. Is you know drinking tea. I noticed that you drank some tea since you've been here. Yeah. What type of tea is that? Is it chamomile or is it more Earl Grey caffeinated? It was like um I don't really know. Caffeinated definitely not. I don't feel like is good honestly yeah. for me. I mean, and so that's but I don't even. It was like that the fruit tea that yeah, was down. Yeah, I don't passion, know what it passion was, fruit. Yeah, passion fruit, and that's what it was. And I actually do think that that can help 100 percent with anxiety. Um, and honestly, like, like we were saying, a lot of it's mental too. So just, if you feel that it helps you, it might, it, it is going to yeah, help. Even if it's true. a little bit of placebo. I mean, like if you, if, if for you drinking tea or whatever, CBD, if you feel that it helps you, then. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other thing is like using some products and not all of them. Cause here's the thing. Sometimes you'll, you'll take in some products and there's so much shit in them that it actually yeah. ignites things oh, yeah. outside. Right. So like if you ever eat anything bad, do you feel like you get anxiety sometimes? It depends on the food. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think now I'm more conscious of it. Now that I understand what putting different foods in your body and, and different disgusting chemicals can really do to yeah. you, I think I do now, yeah. I, I yeah. do notice it. So, so so let me ask you, you know, are you, do you actually cause a lot of the anxiety for yourself then? Like yeah. outside of just like, hey, going to sleep and you're getting an yeah. like anxious and telling yourself in your mind, but like mm -hmm. the foods that you eat and maybe the hours that you're going to yeah. sleep do you feel like you caused that and can other people relate to that? Absolutely. Actually, this is something huge. Like this is like fucking massive. So like when I was suffering from anxiety at my worst point, right in high school, like I literally was doing nothing. Like it was, I would, I wasn't even training to how I wanted to train. Yeah. I was doing nothing. Right. And I was letting that anxiety eat me up. Like there's times, right. Where you're going to, and this is for depression too, really. It's like, you're so low that you don't really see the light in the sense. Like you yeah. don't see the light in the tunnel at all. But what I've noticed is, when you're in that state, you still have to do all the things that you know you should be doing to be successful and to make yourself happy. Like if you're not going to the gym, if you're not, you know, reading, if you need to read or, you know, being active, going to hang out with friends, right. you know, working on your business, whatever it is, if you're not doing those, when you feel like shit, when are you not going to feel like shit? Yeah. Right. Because one day there's going to be like just a little needle of like light that you'll see and, and you'll, and you'll feel fulfilled from what you've done in that day. Yeah. And then it just stacks on. Stacks yeah. And more on, and more and it opens on. up. It's like a, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's an amazing point. Cause I mm -hmm. feel like, um, it's, it's even the small wins while you're being anxious, because if you're so used to like, it's getting worse and worse and worse, like your anxiety or like every single night when you go to sleep, it's the same thing. And like you freak out more and more and more, and then you can start getting more symptoms. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's just a shift of, Hey, okay. I'm, I'm here. Let me embrace this feeling. Why am I feeling this? Oh, well, I ate this shit or I am going to sleep. It's freaking 3 a.m. Or, oh, I didn't talk to my ex about this yeah. or I didn't talk to my friend about this or I didn't finish this project or a lot of it comes down to and stems from like sources that yeah. are we should actually be aware of. Right. It's like we were late all day today yeah. and we didn't even realize it. And then by the time it hits nighttime, it's like, oh, shit, I've been late all day mm -hmm. and it's actually making me anxious because it's been stress on yeah. top of me because people around me are telling me like yo why are you late hey yeah. why'd you do this why did you show up like this you know yeah. what i mean so that's that's kind of like it's yeah. it's the tip of the iceberg it all goes back to being present yeah. and being aware of our situations what we're doing so that's yeah. that's amazing man i'm glad we could we yeah. could talk on anxiety now let's talk about some haters some haters. Yeah, this is the shit yeah. that I really like. I, this is fucking juicy shit. Oh, we got some haters. Oh, all the haters, all the all the big cheese yeah. haters. So <laughs> let, let's actually really quick before we talk about haters, where does big cheese come from? So basically, me and my my good friend David Laid, we we come up with just weird, different like catchphrases and just shit we say all the fucking time. It's just like what we do ever since we were younger. Like I don't even know where it comes from. We're just weird people, right? But why so, not? Why big cheese? And why not like big? You know, I think, you know, what really is is because he's because there's a lot of fat content, right? In mm, cheese, right? Yeah. I have a lot of fat content in Dave's eyes. So then he, <laughs> he then likes to call me. Basically, he's call, it, like it's like in a nice way calling me fat. You know what I mean? So <laughs> big cheese. And then now I have, you know, tens of thousands of people call me big cheese every day. So, so, so are you yeah. going to be called shredded cheese? Yeah, I mean, I'll be shredded cheese once I'm shredded. Are you more dairy or are you vegan free? Um, or sorry, vegan, vegan free. free. That would be dairy. Yeah. yeah, that would. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. I'm, um. I would say I'm dairy, man. You're dairy? Yeah. Mm, so you're dairy cheese. Are you dairy. ever going to be like non-dairy non, non -dairy cheese? 
once I start doing yoga more, I get more in touch with myself and I realize how bad dairy is for me, I probably will then not be a dairy cheese anymore. Mm, okay, yeah. cool. So we'll shredded yeah. cheese coming soon yes. to a local store near you. Local so, store. So, so, okay, big cheese, whatever, but like the haters, like people yeah. that, because I, I mean, let's be real. I mean, you're Dylan McKenna. Yeah. You know, you, you get a lot of, you get a lot of people. And I don't, I, you know, I don't like to call them haters and mm. shit, like, but the people that, that throw jabs at you well people get i think what it is like honestly people get upset i think i i first like started experiencing hate and it's funny because i get i don't even know i've probably gotten like thirty thousand dms in my life directly about is this that is that counted topic. you counted it no i'm saying just about this one topic oh. that's an over exaggeration oh, but i'm saying like okay. i've had a fuck i thought it was researched or no i've had a fuckload like of dms PubMed. about people specifically saying this to me like dude i'm in high school i'm in college i'm at the work wherever it is and you know they start doing something good for themselves right and they, whether it be business, whether it be lifting, whatever, most people come to me for lifting and they'll be like, like everyone's kind of making fun of me for going to the gym all the time, or I'm yeah. kind of scared, like post a, you know, a picture on my Instagram of, of the progress that I made and all that type of stuff. And I remember for sure, like when I started getting into the gym and stuff like that in high school, people would kind of throw jabs at me. They'd call me like Max out McKenna, D1 Dill. Like they just fuck with me. D yeah. D1 Dill. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. What's D1 Dill? Can you guys like that D1 one? football player, running back Dill. Uh, yeah. So they fuck with me. But they're saying that you're not going to do Muscles that. McKenna. No, they would say, I don't know. Just like, like do you think you were going to yeah, D1? No, D1? No, no, I wasn't yeah. going D1, yeah. but I'll take that D1 one. D1 double A maybe? No. D2? D3. <laughs> if I was going to go, it's going to be D3, but um, I still wasn't good enough for that. But anyway, um, <laughs> Yeah, they'd come like Max out McKenna, all that stuff. And it wasn't, and that, that was like playful and stuff. But behind my back, you know, they'd be like, oh, like, why is he going to the fucking gym all the time? Like, what is this kid's problem? Like, he's yeah. obsessed with himself, all this stuff. And they just didn't really get it. They were kind of jealous. Maybe some of the girls were like, oh, wow, he looks good. Some of the guys are upset about it, whatever it is. And um, I think that goes for anything. Once you start doing well in anything, you're going to have people who are not, they're just not happy with themselves. So they're then going to be upset that you're, that you're happy with yourself and that you're doing something good. So how do you deal with it? Um, I think j from the beginning that it started happening, do you, I did, do you throw some like funny emojis back at the, at the comments? Sometimes though? I will like just to make other people laugh that understand that person's hating. But yeah. in reality, I don't respond to haters in like a serious way. 99% of the time, unless someone says something so nasty that I will DM them like, dude, like I'm honestly here for you. Like this is like really fucked up. Like do you really <laughs> understand what you're saying right now? Like, and when I do do that, you know, it's funny. Every time I've ever done that, someone will say the most horrid shit you could ever think of, like about your family, all these things, right? And then they're like, dude, I'm actually a fan, or like, oh, you know, I didn't yeah, really mean yeah, it yeah. that way. You know what I mean? So it's like well, they just want attention. Man. Well, let me ask you, man. They this is very interesting because I've, I've, you know, hated on you a little bit on your, on your page, <laughs> and you, um, you blocked me. And then, and then, and then, like 24 hours later, you unblocked me. So what's up yeah. with that, man? Well, with you specifically, I just don't like you personally. Uh, so it's just, but yeah. other people, dude, that's super fair. No, that's super <laughs> fair. Yeah, unfollow me <laughs> no, now. No shit, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna unsubscribe now. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna. <laughs> Guys, he's un right he's now. literally unfollowing me as we speak. Uh, I'm yeah. actually gonna unfollow. No, yeah, this is it'll actually, make my follow ratio better. Look. Uh, 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 okay, cool. Uh, yeah, follow back. No, yeah, I'll this is literally how his emotions go with me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I really hey hey take that off the table. You know, it's Oop. brand new table, nice table. Yeah, I just got to make sure it's yeah. cool. <laughs> but anyways, man, I would to be honest though, I don't let people like that bother me because the truth of the matter, and it's easy to say this, but I truly believe that it's like if someone is taking the time to hate on me, then I I it it means nothing to me, man. Because honestly, there's really no fucking reason that someone should be hating on me for the stuff that I put out. Like I'm literally putting out positive motivating yeah but dude you're content. smiling like you know yeah. that's kind of you know people don't like that yeah but yeah you can't smile on the internet man well you know exactly man you can't do anything in there you can't say <laughs> this you can't say that you yeah can't no, do no that. positivity positivity yeah. is out the door you know what I'm so whatever the case man people just get up they get upset they push narratives on you and honestly right. it just i don't let it bother me because i realize that that person is of absolutely no value to me if they're just going to point out negative shit right like, positive like re like not reconstructive constructive criticism is one thing and that's something you have to be able to take. Like if you're maybe misleading people or you're saying some stupid shit on the right. internet or whatever the case is and people call you out for it, right? You don't block them and say and, and start crying about it. I mean, okay, then you apologize for it. But, and that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, if someone gives you constructive criticism, that's one thing. But when someone's just blatantly hating, like saying whatever the fuck it may be about you, there's absolutely no reason to be upset about it. Um, cool. In my opinion. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. So uh, long story short, if someone's hating on you or you feel like they're hating mm -hmm. on you, quote unquote, 
shift and either support them or keep on walking forward because it's most likely something that's I going think on. the more insecure you are with yourself, the more the haters are going to bother you. I think it really it's not the haters that are bothering you. You feel that way about yourself. So yeah. Like, I mean, like I like when someone's literally could look me in the eye or, or fucking comment something that is negative and I'm confident in myself enough to know who I am, you know, what I'm about and those types of things. Obviously, everyone has flaws, but at the same time, like you like your beard. I do like the beer because I got a little trim up yesterday. Um, but it, it's kind of yeah. sad. It needs to grow in a little more. Uh, okay. But but at the end of the day, man, it's just like it is what it, it is. It is what it is, right? It is it's all is. good. I got a tattoo on my wrist that says it's all good. It's pretty sweet. So why did you get into the gym? What what does the gym mean to you, especially when you were a teenager? Yeah, <clears throat> I think initially I got into the gym. I so I, I had to get into the gym, right? Because I did um, sports in high school. So I was almost forced into the gym, right? I was the kid sitting in the weight room. I was like, oh, this is stupid, whatever. <laughs> I didn't like it because I see all these other dudes fucking throwing around heavy weight. I'm like, oh, uh, well, you know, I'm more athletic. I don't need this stupid shit, right? Whatever. And then I, uh, I started actually lifting. One day I was like, you know, I'm going to take this serious. I'm going to lift. And um, I started seeing changes in my body um, that I never thought I would see. Like I actually started feeling confident. I could wear a T-shirt without feeling like scrawny or girls like pointing things out and stuff. So it gave me this massive confidence. And I think in the beginning with lifting, my, my motivation really derived from wanting to get validation from other people, getting compliments, all yeah. that type of stuff. Um, and then, and like, and that's honestly why I, why I think I got so into it in the beginning, but then it became, it just became a passion, man. It became something that regardless of anyone noticed anything or said anything, I just love to go to the gym every day and it became like literally my form of meditation to be honest. Yeah. And um when I go in the gym I can, you know, I don't feel anxious. I can relieve that anxiety. Really? You don't feel any anxiety? Not in the gym. What if you're going for a PR? When I'm going for a PR and it's interesting because I'm an anxious person, like no, I don't fucking feel any anxiety. It's just I feel like I'm at home. I feel like So I, so, I feel so, good. Man. So why do you feel like you can't bring that calmness to the rest of your life? I think to be honest, man, it I don't know where I would be without lifting. I think that uh it yeah, I have transitioned like that mentality a little bit into my life through working out. Through working out, I kind of learned to kind of keep that calmness in a sense because lifting weights taught me that and brought me to that like meditative space where right. I actually felt confident, I felt comfortable, I didn't feel anxious. And I, and I honestly think that it played a huge role in the fact that I am sitting here right now in Denver, traveled by myself on a plane. Yeah. Like, Dude, I was fucking, I was in the hospital over panic attacks in my hometown because wow. I was still that uncomfortable just going to school, you know what I mean? So I think that lifting has shifted my mindset so much and showed me that I can have that calmness. I can have that, uh, just that happy space. And it really has kind of came into other areas of my life and just it really made me a better person, shifted my mindset a lot. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. If you're listening or watching, like mm -hmm. really take in these words because we all suffer from anxiety in some yeah. way, shape or form. It could be, you know, I, I'm a stress eater, you know, like mm. when I'm stressed, I eat and, and it's all about managing that stress and getting the proper sleep, eating the, putting the right nutrients in your body. You know, if you need to count your, your macros and count your calories for that, like do it. Don't be that jackass that's only, eating, uh, and this is not a jab at anybody, I promise, uh, like eating Sour Patch Kids all day, all yeah. like whatever, and just nom, yeah. nom, 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 and thinking that you're going to like feel amazing off of it like there's there's gonna there's consequences with that yeah and it's also moderation moderation is so important um sweet man so if someone's watching or listening right yeah. now and they're like yo you know man i I'm, I'm trying to do this youtube thing i'm trying to do this social media thing i know this is a cliche question but yeah. like get, let's throw some juice into this shit because this is going to be big time let's make this shit moist yeah. Ooh, moist. moisty moist yeah, a lot of people don't like the word moist man i know you let, let, let's say it multiple times moist moist moist, moist. Welcome right. to the Moist Podcast. Hey guys, welcome the to moist the Great experience. You Moist Experience, yeah. where we get moister and wetter as we go. Okay, now um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. To be dead honest. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We should probably right. shut it off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So you yeah, guys, now, um, so so, what would you what what type of advice would you give to someone um, with content with creation? Content. Okay, honestly, so this is a question that I definitely get all the time. What I would say, man, is like there's the cliche answers, and the cliche answers what everyone's going to tell you is be consistent with your posting. Um, make sure that, you know, you're always consistent, make sure that, you know, you're unique and all those types of things. But in my personal opinion, um, the best way to go about like gaining a following or anything like that is just truly just simply being yourself, like not, and like not trying to be somebody else. Like, yeah. because honestly, if people like it to the point where they want to follow, like the cold truth is like a lot of times people want to follow someone because they're getting something from that person that they're not really getting from other people. 
mm. right? Or like, yeah. you know what I mean? they're deriving something. Or from themselves. They're not getting it from yeah, themselves. Yeah, exactly. So they want to go and they want to get that, whether it be, you know, whether they want to laugh, get entertainment, whether they want to get educated, whatever it might be, right? They want to go to that person. So if you're just being yourself and a lot of people start liking what you do, then they're going to follow you. And it's not really about like, oh, like getting the best camera and the best like laptop set up and posting. Literally just document who you are. Dude, like there's people who have, that could grow a million subscribers in a year that like literally still don't know how to edit. They use their own iPhone and they never plan on gaining a following. So what I would say is just literally be yourself, upload shit that is fun to you, unique to you. And um, yeah, don't try to be anybody else, man. Cause I see all the time, like, you know, people pop up in fitness and like, they'll try to model, let's just say like Dave, like how Dave films videos or how I film videos or how this person does or that person. But in reality, like it's not them, it's not them. So you're just doing what they do, but you're just doing it in a little bit lower of a form. So no one really wants to. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. sometimes you can grow from that, but like yeah. in, in reality, like if you're not you hundred percent of the time, yeah. don't expect your business to grow. Don't expect your relationships to grow. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, let's be real. People won't buy into it, man. Like, People won't bind. I think people literally just want to see all, you being all, authentically you. Like that's just the truth. Because they want to like, relate to you. Like like you yeah. have a lot of friends in real life. Yeah. And because you're so you on social media, you have a lot of friends on social media. Exactly. Wow, works mm-hmm. wonders, right? Yeah. Just like me, you know, I'm super super famous. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I I I have I have a following on social media, yeah. but like I show like the way I show up in person. Sometimes it's it's different actually. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes yeah. I'm even more goofier and that's why I'm trying to get out there and be like, hey, what's up, dude? What's going on? Like yeah. that's who I am. But you know, it translates. You know, I'm very motivational. My motivational side mm-hmm. and my work ethic translates to my social media. So yeah. what do you know? People want to listen to me and follow me. Mm-hmm. Same thing in person. Like I, I surround myself yeah. with motivation. And people. I would say like, let's just say if you're someone out there who, who you're very introverted, you may not have that many friends. It, it obviously doesn't mean like, you know, you can't put yourself out there on social media and like do well. Cause I actually know a lot of like, like for one, Dave's introverted. Dave's introverted. My, like David Laid, if you guys know who that is, he's a very introverted at heart person. But he, but he feels more comfortable with like he's more passionate about editing, filming the videos, and, and that type of stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He just loves it, right? And like same with even which is super interesting. I'm friends with Connor Murphy, if you guys know who that is, and he's like uh, he does like a bunch of viral skits all over the internet and stuff. And he is actually like, and I and I spoke to him about it, and I like he's very introverted. Like he had to work so hard to not to go do these videos that he does in a sense. Um, but he's like a naturally an introverted guy. I'd love to get him on my podcast. Yeah. Can you help me out with that? Connor? Yeah. Give um, me a connection. No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like you. No, Thanks, brother. Yeah, Thanks, brother. Really we'll get him on here. Cool. But, Thanks, brother. Yeah. yeah, this is my networker right here. Yeah. Like, hey man, Connor, can, I, can you get him on here? Please, no. Connor. He doesn't like you. Okay, cool. Please, please come <laughs> on. So yeah, the, 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 all of this is awesome, man. Mm-hmm. And and I wanna I wanna keep on shifting because yeah. I, li- I like just having like yeah. random ass conversations. Um, what are your thoughts on like every, like the whole industry, like this, this whole like steroid stuff and everyone's like, Oh, this person's taking it. This person's taking it. This person, like it's everywhere. Like what does it mean to you? Well, so honestly I can understand it, man. This is why I can understand it. I was at one point like watching all these social media channels. Like I said, I already mentioned Christian. Um, I knew everybody, Bradley, Cal, like whoever the fuck it is. Right. Like I watched every channel, Matt Ogis, Chris Lovato. I watched all these, like, these fitness YouTubers, right? And, like, for some weird reason, it's just, like, I think it's just, like, in an, in an eight thing where you just, like, want to, like, you're, like, is this person taking something? Is this person not? Like, yeah. I, it's just something that you care so much about in a sense. And I remember, like, myself caring so much, wanting to know if this person's natural or not natural, whatever the case but may why? be. But why? I don't, I don't really know exactly why. I think it, I think it probably just stems from, like, in my high school, right? A lot of kids would like take pro hormones or not take pro hormones and you want to, st- or take this or take that. And you want to like stack yourself up against someone. So you're like, oh, okay, if they're on steroids, well, right? I'm natty. Like, hey, yeah, bro. I'm natural. Like yeah. I'm natural. So they're on steroids. So like, oh, like, you know, fuck them or whatever, you know, you're upset. about. Or like it. I'm better than them because yeah. then, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and, and so, and I understand it. And also like, I can understand how a lot of people don't like the fact that someone can claim natural, right. And they're not natural. And then, the, and then, you know, they're going to have young kids think that they're natural. Um, but do you think it, do you think it truly matters? Well, so like at the end of the day, I mean, you could look at it from the token that like, okay, these kids are, they're going to have super, they're not going to limit themselves, right? They're going to see this person who they think is natural, right? They're not natural. And now they're going to shoot, like, they're just going to train, eat hard. And they're going to be, Oh, I'd like to look like, so it could be a bad, a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, man, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think people get a little bit too caught up in it, to be honest. I don't like the like directly lying about it. I, I don't think is good at all. But at the same time, I mean, 
I don't think it's going to change someone's life. Whether, you know, if they're watching someone and they're deriving motivation, they're getting, you know, educated, all these things, and that person does take something, it really doesn't change anything. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. And also, if that, if that person who's, you know, a young kid, right, if, if they think someone's natural, it's not going to hurt them because good, now they're, they're going to fucking stay natural because they're going to think that they're going to be there. Right. You shouldn't take anything, right? Especially right. as a young teen. So I don't, I don't know that it's truly hurting that many you know what I mean? Not many people. So, people. So, yeah. so, so this is very interesting because I have some friends that like really understand steroid use. And and, and let's just put it out there. Yeah. Like st- there's a difference between fucking hardcore steroids, like things like, um, and I, I'm not very, like, yeah. I don't understand it very well, but like, like a uh, Winstrol or yeah. like M. Yeah. Isn't it, what is it called? Mdrol or what is it called? M- I mean, there's like SARMs, like different types of SARMs. Yeah, like different types M- of SARMs. Yeah. So like there's a huge, huge difference. And, and let's just put it out there from like SARMs and, mm-hmm. and, a, and like a steroid and like just testosterone yeah. or... Well, there is, man. I mean, there is. They're, they're all, what they all are is performance enhancing drugs. Some of them have much worse side effects than others. And some are way more aggressive. Some are way more aggressive. I mean, exactly. So it's kind of, And another thing is, I mean, a lot of people will, you know, they maybe take a little something, but they're like, okay, I only take a little something. So like... Technically, you know, I'm not taking, I'm not taking, I'm not taking, and it is what it is. I mean, yeah, you're just always going to have that period. So, so, so do you look at someone differently if they're on something or not? Personally, I would never look at somebody differently if they're on something at all now. Like you're just doing it, right? Yeah. You're like, just, like yeah. you know, one person that talks about it all the time is Brendan, Brendan Harding. Yeah. And, and I'm like, friends with Brandon. yeah, and I'm friends with him as well. And I mm-hmm. think, I think what he does, like he's mm-hmm. so dedicated to a sport, right? And yeah. it's like, Hey, if he's doing that, like, let him do it. He knows the side effects. He knows what he's going through. And I think this goes for anyone and everyone, you know, like yeah. I, I have friends that, that do it so, so consistently in there, but, but like they go to the doctors and they know exactly what they're doing. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody should really take it. I, it's not, the, it's not there's healthy no, for you. Right. No but healthy, like, there, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a good, there's a more optimal way to take things like yeah. that, but there's, there's no, no healthy like, way, man. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So if you're, if you're watching or listening right now and you're like, Hey, you know, should I take something, whatever, go natural and just, and just go down the natural train and, and, and enjoy that. And if you decide one day that you want to compete or you want to do this, or you want to do yeah. that on a different stage, but, you know, even, even then, man, cause you, you, I see a lot of people, right. They train for eight months and like, Oh, I want to do a show, but they use the show as an excuse to go take something. Yeah. But I promise you this, like, if you if you want to go take steroids, right? Because you and 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 the truth of the matter, the real true core of the matter is like you want to impress other people. Then you're 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 really gonna fuck. You're yourself. shooting yourself down the wrong because like street. W- you're not impressing the girl like that you just picked up at the bar when you know your dick doesn't work anymore because you're taking something or when you have. Cyst- I actually don't think that's a side effect though. <laughs> it absolutely is, man. You sure? About- Absolutely, man. Some of them can actually have the the reverse effect. They call it decadic. There's one like, dude. There's different steroids really? that literally cause the reverse <laughs> effect. But anyway, okay. But but even then, so, so are you gonna stay on steroids for the rest of your life? So the point is, you're gonna. Dude, can we hold on? Hold on. Can we just like pause for a second? Decadic. De- decadic, man. Double D's, baby. Double D- <laughs> you don't want the double D's. You want the double D's on the girl. You don't want double D's in the bedroom with your dick. Period. You don't want it. It's just how it is, man. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay. Dick it. Okay. So. Like what I'm saying, man. Okay, but when you come off all that fucking great shit, you're feeling like Superman, right? Your dick's three inches longer. You're doing all these great things in the bedroom. Good for you, right? Now you come off, and for the next for the next year, your hair is falling out. You have two fucking baseballs under your nipples. You look like because you have gynecomastia. You literally have for the rest of your life acne scars on your back, acne scars on your chest, oh, acne shit. scars on your face that you would have never had. And and was it fucking worth it for that six month cycle that you did? I mean, and also on top of that. You're also shooting. I mean, you're pl- you're really shooting Russian roulette with it because if you do come off, there's a chance that you'll never be normal again without continuing to stay on it. For right, the right, right. And that's it's another thing, dumb, guys, man. guys, girls, like gr- women as well, because a lot of women take take shit. Let's Dude, be real. Every girl that I know that's fucking taking. Hold on, shit. hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, Let me interrupt, man. Okay, okay, go, cool. go ahead. They get messed up. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. So, so yeah, like uh, from from this discussion right here, like, look, if you're gonna take something, like, consult with a doctor that actually knows about this stuff mm-hmm. obviously it's illegal right yeah. like it's certain things are illegal they're all legal and there's certain things that aren't illegal. well okay yeah there are yeah, right. yeah pro yeah. hormones some of the songs I, I want yeah brendan one uh dylan yeah. zero you on just that go, one. To, go to thailand you can get a cheap what oh nothing. thailand have nothing. you ever been to thailand you've literally never been to thailand nope <laughs> i've never been there. he like literally pulls this shit out of his ass so like that by the way that's dylan's by the way i have right actually there. been to thailand have you really yeah phuket yeah phuket yeah phuket Pookie, yeah. You're, we keep some of his own. Forget. I've been in Thailand. You're, that's ridiculous. So, yeah, just, like, <clears throat> be smart about it. Don't be stupid 
and just go in there and be like, oh, I'm going to take a, this trend and I literally, I literally say that all the time because that's the only one that I really know. It's, it, by the way, is it wrong? It's clenbuterol and then there's trembolone acetate or trembolone anthony. Are, are you really? Yeah. It's not trembuterol. It's, it's called clenbuterol. Yeah, no, it's not clenbuterol. Okay. So clenbuterol. <laughs> yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. How do you say the next one? The trend one? Trembolone acetate. Trembolone, trembolone acid. Ac- ac- I, I just want to be like acetate. Yeah. Acetate. Yeah. Trem- yeah. So, but Not like, just be smart about it and do it for the reasons that, like, if you want to become a pro bodybuilder, mm-hmm. like, do it, you know, or if it's certain things. I, actually, I'm not condoning it, by the way. Dude, it, I'm just saying yeah. be smart about it if you are going to do it. I don't suggest it, but, and that's all. Cool? Yeah. Cool. Sweet. So, Dylan, yeah. Outside of fucking all this shit, like, what do you like to do, man? Do you like to play piano? Are you a piano player? Are you an MLG gamer like myself? I wish I was. You, I see you have MLG back there. NCW. What do you? Hold on, MLG. Hold on, hold on. What is hold, that? Hold on. Why is there an MLG thing up there? Time out. How come everybody that walks in here and Mike, you notice that, right? Like people dude. keep on coming in here and they're like, "Oh, dude, why do you have MLG?" Like it's dude, literally in the corner. There's a few things in here that I'm like, I, I, I'm super confused about. All right, ask me. <clears throat> the surfer. The surfer. I'm a skimboarder. I've skimboarded for, for that years. That is the saddest thing I've ever heard. What I actually, I actually that? like while I was playing collegiate football, I had like long hair. I was about to dread it up, and like I would throw them. just so you could do your skimboard. And, you and I also, I also love, I love waves. I love, I can really yeah, ride waves. I'll teach you how to surf. Okay, thanks, bro. Yeah. What else? What else you com- you confused about, brother? Brother, World of Warcraft. Yeah, I played World of Warcraft for years. Had multiple characters at level seventy, and uh, that was when it was the top. I had, uh, yeah, dude, I was interesting. I was, I would go, I would go on raids all the time. Oh, like I had all my best friends, my besties. On there, interesting. Besties, yeah. World of Warcraft, baby. Major League Gaming. What else? Very interesting. What, what, what else are you curious about, man? Because I'm more curious about you. But it's cool if you want to ask. Everything else kind of fits. Everything. Yeah. Major League Gaming. By the way, I played Halo, Halo Two, and Halo Three professionally. So, but um, I don't know, man. For me, what I would say, the things I've always been passionate about. I've grown up like uh, snowboarding, surfing, skateboarding. That's right. You're so, really good, dude. Yeah. Why don't we go snowboarding tomorrow? We can, go snowboarding. we can literally go out there and go snowboard. You don't have your gear, but we can. Rent Maybe some gear. we could do that. Yeah, I mean, I love snowboarding. My aunt and uncle, like, they've always had a house like up in Vermont, which is about six hours from me in New Jersey. I've right. I've done that, so I mean, I'm super passionate about that. But um, aside from like, I mean, so yeah, action sports really just in general, I love and I always have. Like, I started surfing, learned when I was three, snowboarding, yeah. th- literally three years old. Um, but other than that, man, I would say. Just honestly, like helping people for sure, but I think that that kind of ties into like what I do. Dude, I feel like you're gonna be a guest speaker one day. Like, like one day you're gonna you're gonna hold a stage and have a lot of people that are are. are, I honestly, man, like out of all the jokes and stuff, I I see a lot of, uh, I see half of you and me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, half. The other half is like your own good. good The other half's good. Mm, Like the half that I have with you is bad, and I have a good. (laughs) That's cool. No, but like honestly, I I see you as being. Very, very successful long term. Mm-hmm. And I see you really showing up for not only for yourself, for other people around you. And, and, and I've seen that with your business. You yeah. know, we work on some things together. Yeah. And uh, it's really, it really is cool to even seeing your growth in the past year, yeah. just like where you're at now. And so, like, what is speak Like, would you ever want to guest speak? Like, where is that for you? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I would, man. I mean, I, it's, like, funny because, like, I want, I'll watch, like, uh, guys like Ed Milet, Tony Robbins, um, you know, like, some other people, even Greg. Brendan Bar- Myers, yeah. Brendan Myers. Yeah, great um, guy. I don't, the thing is, I don't need to Subscribe watch now. you. I don't need to watch you, man, because I can call you any, uh, anytime I want. Maybe I should, maybe I should put that on, like, a, like, a, like a block or. A b- uh, block my number? Yeah, yeah, just so. That sucks, man. Yeah, just so that you can well, I mean, watch you, me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, want, I don't want to watch, man, because I'll just give you a fucking call. I can ask whatever I want, all my specific questions, whatever. But Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, I could see that, man. I think, I think that'd be super cool. I think that, like, me sitting down and, like, articulating everything really well to be able to, like, present it to people would be something I'd be really interested in doing because I think a lot of the times, like, I have all these thoughts, and, like, I, and I've, I've been through some stuff and whatever, and I think that I could help a lot of people, but sometimes I'm, like, I'm not super articulate with, like, my thoughts. And so, oh, yeah, like, you'll, yeah, you'll go, like, in yeah. a circle. So, but if You're I like, kind of like a dog, you ever seen a dog and it's like chasing yeah, his chasing own tail? Yeah, it is me. I don't, you know what it is, man. It fucking really is. It is. But see, like, like, I'm not being. But dis- if by I the way, stop, I'm not being but, disrespectful. But think about it. But if I stop chasing the tail, <laughs> imagine how fucking far yeah, it's you, gonna go. <laughs> so, so realistically, I mean, stop. Ch- hey, th- this is a huge lesson. Stop chasing your own tail. Ch- your tail. You, you stop chasing stop. The, the tail. Yeah. And then you're gonna you're gonna yeah. go far in life. So successful. basically, I think that's. I mean, it'd be cool. Yeah, I would love to do that. All right, cool. Well, all right. What's one of your favorite foods? Favorite foods? Hmm. Wow, is this really that tough of a question? Steak. Really? That's so basic, man. Do you like <sighs> lamb? Do you like lamb? Yeah, I like lamb, but Wine. I mean... Uh, well, well you, you don't like it more I than I introduced steak? you to lamb, didn't I? 
How? I don't. We were. No, you didn't. Oh, hold on. Let's let's not. He was. Um. Not. We. Yeah. We were in Boulder, Colorado, a few like about two months ago, and we were at Whole Foods. So I was like, "Yo, dude, you should brother. try this lamb, brother." And brother, now you're on it, right? I, I think I introduced you to lamb. Oh shit! Yeah, it's the opposite. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of what I just said. Yeah. Fuck. What the. Oh Lord, I'm so glad yeah. you tried lamb. You see how we just did that? That's him chasing his own tail. There it is. Yeah, yeah. There you go. See, nobody knew that. I, like, just the the straight face that I just had saying that. Nobody knew. I but, think you started. But even that's a problem. That was the case. <laughs> yeah. But, that, but but Dylan, you should really shouldn't talk about. I that. should work on that. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't be like, oh, yeah. hey guys, I can do a straight face and lie and tell you that. Yeah. I have three nipples and I actually have two noses <laughs> and I also own this business called Expedia.com. And, Yo, uh, did you just Expedia? Yeah. That's a real business, man. You gotta yeah. cut this. <laughs> It was so so. Get a lawsuit, man. So, where does your comedic side come from? I don't know, man. I'm just naturally like the, well, probably the, like one of the funniest people ever. You're lived. natty funny. Yeah. You're funny natty. Yeah. F- you're funny. Okay. I'm just a na- I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I just think you know what it is. I just I don't take myself ser- too seriously, and like I'm always like willing to be like uh, self-deprecating and stuff. So like I don't know. I just feel like I just I always like to have fun. So so, so then let me ask you: When you're in a relationship with a woman, mm-hmm. how does that how does that shift? There's a lot of people that are listening yeah. that are like, yo, I, I, I'm either searching for someone to date yeah. or like they, they might not even know it. They're not even ready to yeah. date. Are you ready to date right now to um, actually be in a serious relationship? Do you feel like I think a, honestly, this is the truth. I'll tell you right now. When you meet the right person, you're always ready. You think so? If you meet that tr- the 100 percent right person, you're always ready. But, but how do you meet the 100 percent right person if you're not if you're not growing within yourself yet? Well, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, you can't do that. No, you can't. But I'm just saying, like, I'm saying at the same time, like, if you're, well, I guess, yeah, I guess that's the case. But in my opinion, I would say that, like, regardless of what growth phase you're at or whatever, if you find someone else that's truly right for you, right, they're in that same growth phase. So at the same time. Yeah, that's true. So at the same time, you might both be going through shit. You might both, like, that person might be able to help you tremendously grow and you help them grow. And that's how people build, you know what I mean, marriages that last 30 years is growing together. But I would say, yeah, like, if you meet the right person, then it's kind of like you're always ready. But I mean, also, I'm not, I'm not actively seeking, no. Right, right, say. right, right. So like, <clears throat> if someone wa- is watching right now, <clears throat> sorry about that. If someone's watching right now or listening and they're like, damn, I'm like trying to find somebody in my life. Like, ah, why, it's just not working. Or like, I can't find a girlfriend. I can't yeah. find a boyfriend. Like, wh- what would you say? I, it's, I, what I would say to that is to literally just be yourself. Oh, I was about to say the same Dude, thing. Dude, just fucking be yourself around, around women or men, wh- whatever like sex you are. I mean, honestly, being yourself, I've found, right? I used to be nervous to be myself around women. So I, you know how, how I am towards you, how I am just yeah, in thank general. You. Thank you so much, Dylan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you want to grab some food after this, man? No. Okay. Not with you. Cool. But, um, like, I just wouldn't be myself around women because I was just nervous. I, I just felt scared. Like, like, I didn't know how they would take it, whatever it was. Now, I just, now that I truly am just myself, I don't really give a fuck. That, that I feel like this is when it just women, women just come into your life, yeah, and you can kind of so just so yeah. so basically be you, and don't bring any expectation with that. Don't don't create any assumptions. Literally, exactly. just just be you mm-hmm. and go through your life, and someone's gonna walk in. Like it's the same thing for me. You know, <clears throat> I am dating right, and yeah. um, I have some incredible people in my life. Yeah, uh, but I'm not, I'm also not rushing anything, yeah. and I'm open. I keep my mind open, and I allow yeah. everything to progress the way. It, the way it should and bring my vision to life. Cause remember your vision when you create you, it's not only creating like the big business create or whatever. You. Yeah. You like that marketing right yeah. there? Some real shit. So it, it's not about only creating you like your business, it's yeah. about creating your relationship with a, a woman or a male or how, how, yeah. however you roll. It's about are you trying to say, all right, nothing, what? Nothing. What? Nothing. Wait, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say you have like a thing with me or Wait. <laughs> all right, whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Dylan, we'll talk about that later. All right. Yeah. Cool. So um, like, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? This guy's hilarious, man. Yeah, stop. big cheese. Yeep. I can't stop. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so, so if you didn't notice, uh, we're just gonna shift the conversations. Fuck it. Yeah. it like the yeep, 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 noop, gotta goop, yeep. I go like this. Yeep. I, I, like, I taught you that. That's one thing but, you can't but, but, say. But here's the thing: is that I've evolved it. So, so like, well, so, uh, you might have devolved it a little I, bit. I don't know, man. A lot of people love it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, see, see, like I do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that, the yeah thing is a little bit. Uh, yeah. It's a goop, yeah. noop, noop. Yeah. I don't know. No, yeah, man, that's what that's the way I, I I vibe with it. But what type of music do you like, bro? Music. Are, are you into like? <sighs> like, <sighs> like that? Kill like, their family. <sighs> no, I'm into. Did you say kill their family? 
Yeah, because you know, like those screamos, it's just like it's just like all sad and dark <laughs> and like kill the law. Like, yeah, I don't. Know. I actually don't think they say that though. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Is it just? Me? I, yeah, I think. Okay. I think. Well, you've honestly, that. I like. Um, dude, I like everything. I like rock, alternative. Dude, I like Post Malone. I like Katy Perry. I like Justin Bieber. Can you sing any I songs? Like do, you have any, do you have any songs that you got? I like. Come on, give us, give us something. No, I'm not gonna sing a song. Come on, come on give us something, dude. Come on, let's get vulnerable. I don't do that for free, bro. <laughs> That's. Okay, so you're you're, you're a payment system now. Okay. Payment system, yeah. Okay, Snapchat, like premium. Yes, but mm. is there really you have to pay for a fucking dude? There's a, there's actually a premium for Snapchat. Unbelievable. But Snapchat, anyway, right, I mean, right, right, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. I uh, cryptocurrency you pay with Bitcoin. I'm kidding, bro. Come on, man. Jeez, it's not on the blockchain yet. You probably lost a lot of money in that. Yeah. You seem like the type of guy. Bitcoin. Yeah. Did you did you invest? You know what I did? I invested. I put eleven grand into it in one day, and then pulled it out seven days two, later. Two thousand dollars. No, I, I put eleven grand in when it was at thirteen, and it was that week that it spiked to nineteen, I, and I I made like five grand in a week. But anyway, that wouldn't be five grand made. That'd be a lot more. No, it was five grand. It would be like seven grand. Might have been seven grand. It's it's, it's yeah. It's, it, it, well, whatever. It was I put eleven in at thirteen and sold it at like seventeen, and then okay. it went all okay. the way up yeah, to twenty. That's, that's but true. That's the truth. So, so, so let me ask you: Do yeah. you do you actually think that Bitcoin is something that? I sold, what I'm, I remortgage my mom's house to get that eleven grand. <laughs> but what? Do I think <laughs> Fine. Do you believe in Bitcoin? Um, I don't think it's like a steady long-term thing. I think I, I just think that there's not enough out there about it, to be honest, for for it to like be something that I would ever invest in. That's why I right pull now, it out. yeah, no, because I mean, like, think about it. Other things like real estate, other stock market things are things that there are people out there who can really educate you on. But with that, I mean, I don't think it's, it's really new. Is what it's you're just saying. new? Exactly. It could be great. I just. It's uh, that, you know, that's like Gary Vee talking about Uber and how he had an opportunity and he fucked up. I know. You know what I mean? He did fuck up. Yeah. So like, yeah, keep your, I should have kept open. that 11 grand in there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, actually, bro. No. Cause you, you bought in at 13. That was so high, bro. Dude. It's, it, it went up to fucking 21, bro. That's fine. In a week. It's and I was like, holy at, shit. I'm going to be what fucking is it, rich. Six? Is it six right now or something like that? It's like six, bro. It's six right now. 6,000. I'm going to empty my, you would have, you would have, you would have literally lost half of that money. You would be at six and the mortgage that you're talking about with your mom. Yeah. Shit would not have happened. I know, she's she loves me though. She'd be like, it is what it is. She'll only remortgage again. <laughs> yeah, she supports me. What do you, what do you think about buying a house or, or any, anywhere in the world? Where would you where would you buy a house? Who if I'd buy a fuck, man? Probably and you know it's funny, I've never been there. Antarctica, you mean? Ooh, yeah. New Zealand? Yeah. Out Malibu, California. Malibu. See, you're really about Cali. Huh? I fucking love it. But I'm trying to get, get you to move here to Denver. Horny for California. Oh, you're bro. horny for Cali. Just the state. Dude, you could really build a business. Hornyforcalifornia.com. I have a sexual attraction for California. Do you really? Yes. What is it? Is it the sun? Is it the, the juiciness? I think it's the, the women, honestly. Is it really? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, I think I love California. But every kidding, there's a little bit of truth. Yeah. There's some gorgeous women. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just a few. Yeah. There's a there's beautiful women everywhere, man. Yeah, there's beautiful women everywhere. Like I literally walk outside of my house and I'm just like beautiful women. Yeah, yeah no, there's right beautiful now. women in, in everywhere, especially in cities like this, all, of course. But um, what I like about California, mainly honestly, is the weather. Like out of everything, it's the weather. I mean, obviously, there's business connections. There's I have a lot of friends there. There's a lot of collaboration opportunity. There's management opportunity i mean there's a million different opportunities also on top of that it's better content you know for my youtube of course you know what i mean when i'm but i'm right? not there man yeah but yeah you know you know you'll be back in about a year you think but, so yeah you'll be back wow you were yeah wow he uh oh. just he, that there goes my uh, death sentence for for denver Colorado. honestly you're gonna be back you'll be back in Cal you'll be back in california in, in the next do you want to do you want to get a big house together man um you thinking yeah. yeah maybe after we invest in bitcoin and lose all our money <laughs> then we won't have any money man. i'm just kidding like bitcoin is yeah. good yeah. dude california is the shit man because every day you can wake up and fucking go outside in a t-shirt in well southern california i primarily like malibu like San what Diego. about taxes though man this dude, is the thing a lot of people don't about even taxes fucking... man oh boy let me tell you man. you pay your taxes yeah. <laughs> holy shit <laughs> so so ladies and gentlemen please pay your taxes yeah. i highly highly encourage that that's uh number one in the in the yeah. bucket list you should literally have a bucket list about yeah no, skydiving I'm, I'm, by the way you should go snorkel with freaking sharks and then pay your pay your taxes geez, like 100 don't break your yeah. bike, man. <laughs> i get but, i get intense when taxes no. get, but no taxes yes pay your taxes do you pay quarterly no Why i just not? say fuck it and slam it get a late and get a fucking get a little fee <laughs> oh i don't feel like paying listen it. listen okay okay this really needs to be said Pay your taxes quarterly. Like literally create a projection for how much you earn. And then at the end of the year, you know what usually happens? Dude. Well, sometimes you get a big fat 
tax return. Dude, ninety. Like, what? You don't get it. You get a tax. Okay. Anyway, but ninety nine percent. I got a tax return. Ninety nine percent of people don't. Act, they they just get their money pulled out of a fucking paycheck. That's true. That's true. But so if you're an all, entrepreneur, if you want to yeah, become something, if you want to become different. an entrepreneur and you're a savage, you just fucking pay it at the end of the year. Ooh, was that like a Logan Paul reference? Savage, baby, Maverick. Are you a Maverick? Yeah, I'm a fucking Maverick, dude. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah, I'm a fucking dumb. I thought you were a gym shark. No, I honestly, yeah, you know, I'm also a Maverick. Yeah. That, you're a yeah, Maverick. I can't talk about it now. Oh, uh, okay. I'm, I'm a Jake Pauler. Are you fucking serious, dude? <laughs> we'll fight about it. <laughs> wow. Think about it. Like, who would win a fight? Lo- Boxing? Who would win a fight? Logan or Jake? Me. Logan or Jake? <laughs> uh, who would Who would win it? Who would win a fucking Logan? Fight? Yeah, I'm For Logan. Sure. We just said I'm Logan. But but I but I fuck with Jake. Jake's a cool dude. Jake, if you're listening, no, Jake is cool. Yeah, they're both cool dudes. That's super interesting. So, so, dude, like, where do you where do you see yourself here here in the next year, two years? Like, honestly, <laughs> well, I first want to preface. I like how you said uh, here. Like, I, where do you see yourself here <laughs> in Denver, Colorado? Um, preferably living in this building. That, that's very yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. Where do I see myself in one or two years? I don't know, man. I, I see myself just growing my business into something that I know that it's going to be just like literally getting it to getting my business from where it is now to where I know that it's going to be. Yep. And I know that like, there's a lot of work that's going to come with that a hundred percent, but doing that and honestly being able to help my mom out more with my sister. Um, and really, man, just like gr- personal growth, just growing myself, getting better with my anxiety and just being more conscious. Of the things you should go that, through something called the M- 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 Oh, wow. Have you heard man, of that? That's interesting, man. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. That you brought that up. Maybe I will. Yeah. I said maybe. See, that's a, that's a step. <laughs> I didn't say you know I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it. And then I'll do it. yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're a man of your word, man. I appreciate that. So, yeah, man, that, that's incredible. That like you know you want you really want to grow. You're in yeah. the growth phase. So I always ask this question on every single podcast. Mm-hmm. So if you were at a dinner table and everyone was coming to eat and you could have any three people, any three people at all, it could be four if you want. Who would they be? God, man, four people. Yeah. Okay, four people. I would say. Not your mom. Number one. Not your relationship. A hundred percent. Number one would be Tony Robbins. Wow. Okay. Cause I didn't know who he was by the way until recently. And I was like, who the fuck is it? Whatever. But like, dude, he's, dude, he's like six, eight. I know. I'm not going to arm could wrestle. grab you by your head. And I be know. Like, Yo, dude. I kind of like it though. You but like that, honestly, yeah, it'd be Tony Robbins. And the reason why for him, because not only business wise, but just as a human being, I feel that he's fucking amazing like he truly cares about people what if he had dude what if he had so much anxiety and what if he like he didn't treat his his wife the right way like what what if if, but here's the thing is like the only reason why i'm putting it out there is like he doesn't right like he he, yeah he's really in control of his life and he Mm -hmm. inspires me he's like one of my motivators i've been inspired but like a lot of people you know like they have this great life and no i know such motivators i know you're thinking of right now someone who yeah no, People, I, well, there, I actually I mean, don't know who you think. Who well, you think. Well, I'm thinking in general, like literally, well, there's, everyone thinks you have a perfect life. Yes. And then here's the thing is you're going through shit. You actually have issues that you're growing through. So like, what mm. would you say about that? Well, what I would say is like, dude, I wouldn't even be surprised. Like, because honestly, at the end of the day, I think, um, I think I would hope and I would think that if he's going through something like that, right, he would be going about it in the best way that he could go about yeah. it. And that's really all you can do as a human being. But um, I think that like, like I'm saying, like, like I said, he's a very strong person, great mindset. Yeah all those things so i mean obviously people are gonna go through shit periods maybe and just know just know yeah. that not everyone's perfect and like exactly if, if even someone like tony robbins i guarantee you he goes through things you know absolutely dude i mean like and he preaches all these things and he helps so many people but there's definitely times in his life where he's he has a mentor where he yeah where he where of course has a mentor where he's down or he you know he's like fuck like a little confused he's like what am i doing am i not i'm not feeding enough people i'm not doing this yeah. like holy fuck like this suck but he's a billionaire everyone looks up to him. it is what it is everyone has there's that. always more for growth so don't stop growing yeah that's but, amazing um, i would say tony robbins who else um probably like lebron james why and it's interesting i would say and i the reason why i would say lebron james is just because i believe like he's literally the biggest like sports icon in the world right now and I would just want to fucking pick his brain, man. Like, how do you do this shit? Like, what? what yeah, are you how from? to how from how such are a young you, age you were doing? you able to? How like, are you like this? What is it like? What the fuck's wrong? Why? <laughs> what? Who like? Where were you made? Like, what the fuck <laughs> happened? Like, I don't know. Um, and you he's think also that about me sometimes. Like, yo, Brennan, where, where were you made, bro? Yeah, I do. I need to meet your parents. Man. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I mean, LeBron James. Um, <laughs> oh, I would say also another person, Sean White. Sean White was like an idol of mine growing up. He is a professional snowboarder. Dude, he's an incredible man. Yeah. So Sean White, because I think he's such a positive dude. And he's just like, it's, for him, it's more so just the fact that he's been an idol since I was like a little kid snowboarding and stuff like that. Who's like, number four? 
Last Give me one. someone that you follow on social media. Last one. Um, is there anybody? It's difficult, man. Um, is there anybody that you always tune into? You're like, yo, what is he doing? Or how did he do this? Um, always tune into. Uh, not. But I mean, like, dude, maybe like the uh, the Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Ed Mylett. Like, those oh, you are like guys Ed Mylett? Yeah. And those are guys that I watch, man, all the time. I watch all their podcasts, all of their videos. Like, that's who I watch. Um, fuck. So I would maybe potentially go with. You have the fourth seat, man. You have the fourth seat. I would maybe sure potential. I mean, you can't pasta, have Tony you Robbins have and Grant Cardone in the same room because I think. But but no, that's the whole point. You can't that's, see how you're overthinking this. Yeah. How how else do you do this in your life? That like honestly, where this, does this show up? This would just show up, folks. You know, where does this show up in my life? Everywhere. <laughs> Fuck absolutely everywhere. You know what? Grant Cardone, done. He's the fourth. You see? And, and, and now it creates like this is who you want to be in your life, mm -hmm. right? Grant Cardone is gr incredible in investing. You know what you talked about? Yeah. Investing. Never early. buy a single family home. That, that he literally says yeah, that a million times. But like it's interesting how you said all these different things like Grant Cardone, you have Tony Robbins, you have Sean White. You have, so like yeah. all these people encompass who you, you're becoming and who mm -hmm. you are right now. And maybe – you weren't always interested in them growing up, yeah. but like now you are. And like Sean White was somebody, it came from like a, your fun mindset. Like, exactly. I like to have fun. So it, it really is incredible. So if you're listening or watching, uh, watching, that's watching. a, that's an interesting word. Yeah. Then take it into your, into your own hands and look at that the, the same way. Just like I, I mm. say in every podcast, but yeah, man, I, I don't really have much else to say, man. There, there's so much. we well, can Actually talk. really quickly. I want to fucking flip the switch. Wow. Flip. Okay. Uh, see, neither of us can talk the yeah, switch. It's cool. But, who would your four people be? I just I need to know. Well, I always talk about. I always, but have you said it multiple times? Yeah, but you know what? I I, I like to I like to change Dive it up a little it, bit. Yeah. So, Ben Francis. Did something just fall? I just broke my phone. It's all good. It's all, it, yeah. It's all good. Ben who? Ben Francis. I can make a call, man. <laughs> okay. No, no, but honestly, I would like to have dinner with him. Okay. Um, and uh, I I don't I don't really. I like to see big or small, like everybody. You know, mm -hmm. Ben Francis. I would love to see Jake Paul. 100%. I want to tap into the mind of him. So Ben, ben Francis Dude, created something that was absolutely Just go incredible. watch uh, Shane Dawson's documentary. Yeah, right? There's but a yeah. lot more behind Ben, that. Jake. Okay. So ben, Jake. Uh, can you have three or four? Four. I 100% want to sit down with, uh, not George Bush, no. Not George Bush. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> I can't even speak. Obama. Barack Obama. Re re yeah, yeah, because of the, his stillness and his, his calmness Dude, and everything. Scary, that he, it, it's It's really, He's it's scary. really incredible, man. Yeah. And then also, I would really like to sit down with Justin Bieber. That's yeah. And the reason why I say all these people, I, I'm in like this this mindset now is like, there's one person I would want to learn from in all of that, mm -hmm. and that's Obama. That's who I'd really like to learn. Yeah. The other three people, I would like to study them, and yeah. like really, really sit there and get in, tap into their minds, and see how we relate in certain ways, mm -hmm. and like see what makes them so different or unique, right? And that's what I would really like to focus on. So that's my those are my four people for today. Um. And I think that's it. Any other questions you have for me, brother? brother? Um, no, no other questions. Sweet. Well, guys, girls, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the Create You Experience. Was that, was that a cool like transition? It's cool, smooth. Yeah, it's cool, it's smooth. Yeah, yeah, sweet. I like it. Where can people find you, Dylan? People can find me on Instagram at McKenna underscore Dylan, or just, uh, just type in your name. Yeah, just type my name on Instagram. That popular, whatever. I'll show up, and then uh, YouTube. <laughs> much just my name. But do you have a blue ver verified? Yeah, we, we we can talk about that another time. Yeah, we'll talk about that yeah, another time. Yeah. <laughs> next time but yeah so so everywhere dylan mckenna on youtube instagram yeah. you post all the time right yeah i post pretty much every day on instagram cool and then what a, a, sweet and then you have your yeah. businesses and everything and links in the yeah. description all of that yeah. um so definitely go check out dylan thank you so much for for coming on here uh remember we're here on youtube and on all audio platforms uh and also in the description or in the show notes you can go ahead click on the link and you get seven free products, absolutely free, like again, absolutely free meal plans. You get like ad program, like this stuff will hold you over for a little bit. Um, and also you have access to starting your business online checklist and, and those type of guides. Badass. It, it, yeah, it's pretty fucking badass. So definitely tune into that. Remember the Create You Experience isn't just the experience of the podcast. It is an actual experience before the podcast begins. So always tune in when you can. Tell your friends about it. Tag me or tag Dylan yeah. in uh, it, after you watch or listen to this. And thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on the Create You Experience. I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do. You gotta create you.